It says, feeling edgy, a man took a hot bath. Just as he became comfortable, the front door bell rang. The man got out of the tub, put on his slippers, his cloth slippers, and a large towel, wrapped his head in a smaller towel, and went to the door. A salesman at the door wanted to know if he needed any magazines. Slamming the door, the man returned to his hot bath. The doorbell rang again. On went the slippers and the towels, and the man started for the front door again. He took one step and slipped on a wet spot, fell, and hit his back against the tub. Saying words underneath his breath, the man struggled into his street clothes, and with every move, a sharp pain when he was driving to the doctors. After examining him, the doctor says, you know, you'll, you have been a very, very lucky. Nothing is broken, but you need to relax. Why don't you go home and take a long, hot bath? Y'all stand and shake hands with one another.
Because it's higher ground. And I said, I'm short. I was tickled to death. But you know, it has a it has a stronger meaning to that. But I press on towards the goal to win the prize. Philippians chapter 3, verse 14. Higher ground. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. <laughs> Pressing on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining every day. So praying as I upward bound, Lord, when my feet on higher ground, Lord, lift me up and let me stand. By faith on heaven's stable land, a higher plane that I have found. Lord, when my feet on higher. Oh, 
squeeze, squeeze another one, but 327 or the screen, but what would we do without the old rugged cross? Amen. It symbolized a lot, but an old rugged cross. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross.
And, uh, and then we were <laughs> mentioned about Wednesday night how someone didn't show up and uh, on time. And you say, well, I thought it was Robertson time. Well, I thought so too until that excuse came. And she said, I'm on time. It's Robertson time, you know. And then I was tickled to death to know that uh, the uh, singers that was here uh, last week, they even used that phrase. They said, it's Robertson time. I don't know what that means, but... Well, you're going to have to, you're going to, have to be a rocks and a living rocks to know what that means. <laughs> but uh, it's good. I, I don't even know why we have clocks here. Why, why we have clocks? You know, it's just rocks in time. But uh, I know that uh, this morning uh, I throw some uh, scriptures up on the board, but uh, it got me to, to think. Have you ever had a, a project? that you are doing, but you didn't have all the tools to do it. Or you thought, well, I'll just use these tools and maybe. But the title of this sermon is The Only Tool You'll Ever Need. And then on the parentheses, it's Jesus. But where I'm getting my notes from I'm using one story, and if you can, turn to Genesis chapter 6, and uh, I'll, I'm not going to read all of it. In fact, uh, I know that uh, I'm just telling you where I'm getting this, because you said, well, that's a pretty long chapter it is. We'd be here literally forever, the way I read, but where the sermon is coming from is Genesis chapter 6 chapter 7, chapter 8, and chapter 9. And I know some of you guys are thinking, oh dear, I'm in college again. Where the professor <laughs> says, you read 20 chapters and we're going to have a test on it. No, but if you know the story, how Noah had a relationship with God, and knowing him, that no matter what anyone said, God told him to do something. Told him to build an ark. Told him to build the biggest ship I'm imagine at that time. But you think it hasn't rained for many, many years. Many, many years. And the way people, I can imagine telling him, throwing all the negativity you can imagine. Are you nuts? It hasn't rained forever. God told you to build an ark. He told you that rain was coming. But say Noah had a relationship with God that it could not be broken. Amen. No matter what was coming, he said, God is my tool. Of course, I'm paraphrasing. But what about you and myself? Is Jesus the only tool you need? Amen. Amen. Because Jesus knows what you're going through and what I'm going mm -hmm. through. That's right. Or maybe what your neighbor is going through. Or maybe a co-worker is going through. That's so neat about Jesus. Not only that he died for me, he died for you and everybody. It doesn't matter how tall you are, how short you are, what type of color you are. God loves every single one. And no one knew that he was going to be faithful to God no matter what. When God commanded him to do something, guess what? In those three or four chapters, he was faithful. He is God. was his tool. Only tool that he needs. Right. No matter what he faces, because I can imagine many people made fun of him. Made fun of him. Probably mocked, mocked him. Mm -hmm. But guess what? He was so faithful. God is the only tool that I need. That's right. 
That's right. And then you say, well, that's the Old Testament. It is. But if you haven't got there yet, for us living in this time of age, if you can go to 1 John, 1 John chapter 5, verse 7, we're going to do a little exploring today. <coughs> but 1 John chapter 5, verse 7, and then we'll go, uh, we'll skip a couple of verses, but 1 John chapter 5, verse 7. For there are three that bear the record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. Jump down to verse 11 and 12. And this is a record that God has given us eternal life. And this life is is in his son. He that has the son has life, and he that has not the son of God has no life. We are living in a time that guess what? Jesus is the tool we need, guess what? Amen. So we can have a fellowship with God. Amen. Amen. He's the only tool that you need. It says it right here. That he gives us eternal life. This life is what, a hundred years maybe, give or take. But being eternal life is amazing. Amazing. So, have you ever started a project using or trying to use tools that you knew you were going to try to make it? Try to make it work. Well, you say, Chewy, how do you come up with these stories? <laughs> because I experienced them. About two weeks ago when we had the heavy rain, <coughs> I know in the past I was looking at some gutters and I knew when <laughs> the previous time to that time that I saw water coming over the gutters. I said, uh oh, I said, it's clogged up. This water just pouring over when we had the heavy rain. So I told myself, I said, okay, I'm gonna to have to get up there and clean the gutters. Easy task, just like the mower, it's an easy task. That's all you have to do, just get it down and clean, just clean. So when it rains, guess what, it doesn't pour over. So I was looking around and I told Melody, I said, Melody, I, said, I gotta clean the gutters. Okay, well, you think it'd be easy? Well, I was looking around, all I could find was a step ladder. I only had two steps on it. She said, well, you think that's going to work? I said, I think it should be enough. I said, I, I don't need to go to the church because the church has a big one. I said, no, no, I just use this two-step ladder. It's all right. I said, I'm going to get out there and clean it because I know we have some rain coming. So anyways, I'm searching around. I put the step ladder down, climbed on it, and I could reach just a tad. I said, hmm. I said, I need the proper tool to get the leaves and the dirt out. So I said, I know. I said, I searched all over. Trying to search all over to find the tool, and guess what I found? <laughs> the end of a paintbrush long stick. I found. I said, well, the Lord provided for me. I'm going to use it. Did I have the proper tools? No. But guess what? My goal was I'm going to clean the gutter. So I stepped on the stool, I could barely reach, and I had a flashlight because it was dark. It was dark. He said, sure, you should have waited. I know, after telling this story, I should. <laughs> so I got up there, and I had that little stick, and I was going through. I could see the leaves and the dirt falling off. And there was about six or seven friends were there on the wall. And I had that flashlight because it was dark. Find out, they didn't like me so much. They were wasps. Oh, and I said, oh my goodness. Oh. So let me tell you something. Instead of stepping down one at a time, I jumped off the step ladder, <laughs> swinging my arms around. I know there was a truck driving by, and the flashlight was going sideways, sideways. 
I said, okay, I got it clean. So I made sure the wasps were gone. And I said, okay, get back on there. So I get back up there and uh, I was clean. I could tell the, the dirt was coming out, so I was making some progress. And so it was nighttime. Did you ever have that feeling at night that someone or something was watching you? Mm. Let me tell you something. I did. I had a feeling something was watching me. And I thought, well, they were gone. I brushed them away. So I had my flashlight. And all of a sudden, I, I could feel a little, little touch. I said, what in the world? So I looked down on my shirt with the flashlight. And there was one who almost wanted to greet me. Well, I didn't want the greeting, so I jumped off again and started swinging my arms left and right. I said, I know I don't have the proper tools, but I'm going to get this done. It needs to be clean. And I was, I was whopping the, sw the swaths off of me, and it was flying around. I said, okay. So I looked around, made sure all of it was gone. And they were. They, I said, okay. After my two attempts, I said, come on now. This is easy. You get up there, you clean gutter. That's all you have to do. So I got back up there, and of course I wasn't high to high with the gutter. So I had my flashlight, and I was pushing some more. And all of a sudden, the dirt started falling. Started falling on me. The leaves started falling on me. And I was like, you know, I'm getting dirty doing this task with not the proper tools you imagined. And all of a sudden, I felt something, a little standing here a little thing that said what no why would dirt be biting me so i got the flashlight again and i started looking and ants were falling on me biting on me what did i do i jumped off again was wiping them off me as quick as i can did i have the proper tools no but i guarantee you that gold i finished it but guess what the only tool you and I need is Jesus Christ. Amen. Why? Because it's a relationship to the Father. Mm -hmm. The only tool you'll ever need is Jesus. Can you get through things? Yes. He can. Some of the joyous times, the saddest times, the happiest time can. Even when you don't think you have the proper tools, God will provide. Just like that little story, I didn't have the proper tools whatsoever. But I got the task done. And y'all know the scripture very well. But if y'all want to turn to it, John chapter 3, verse 15 and 16. It's so important. John chapter 3, verse 15 and 16. That whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only, only, I mean just one, begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus, no matter where we go and who we see and what work we do, or if we stay here, or we meet someone on the street, May they see the light that Jesus has given to us. Why? He's the only tool we need. What are you going through? I'm not going through anything. Great. If you ever do, or if you know someone that's lost, tell them about Jesus. Amen. That's why I love to hear testimonies. I do. Why? Because they probably went through something I never experienced. Or maybe I went through something that someone never had experienced. I know there's times that in high school I remember. I was sitting 
in class and someone turned around to me, classmate, and she asked me, Chewie, how do you do it? I said, well, what do you mean? How do you do it? From losing one family member to another, a father and a brother, I said, that's a simple question, Jesus. I said, he's what I lean on, and he is what I get strength. Amen. Jesus is the only tool you need. Because you know what? He will provide mm -hmm. for you and I and the little kids back there. He will. And He will do marvelous things if you let Him. That's why, like I said, I like hearing testimonies. You read the stories about Jonah. We'll just throw this out. When he didn't want to do what God asked him to. Or Moses saying, God, I, not me, I can't talk. Of course, I'm paraphrasing. But believe me, I was in that situation. Not me, God. I can't be up here. <laughs> I know I can help, but I don't think you called me to do this. But then, to realize leaning on Jesus, on God's word, and praying to him, anything can happen. Look where I'm standing now. Mm -hmm. Who'd ever thought? I know I didn't. I'm just using this small little example. What about yourself? Your neighbors? Or the, the kids that are going to school? What impact they put in the school? It was so neat because we, they had the uh, sea at the pole and people started putting pictures of kids coming around the Amen. flagpole and praying. Amen. How thrilling, how exciting that is to see little kids doing that, praying. You know, we, we live in a time that it only takes one person to complain. And boy, a big change coming. Hmm. Just like over there in the high school where somebody complained about the little cheerleaders putting a scripture up so the football team would run to it or something like that. One little complaint and the school wanted to change everything. But let me tell you something. A lot of people came together Knowing that they can rely on Jesus, they came together. And yes, did they put it to the courts? They did. And guess what? They're putting scriptures on the banners of the, so people could read. Amen. May we lean on Him more than ever now. Because have you ever experienced a tool? that you can use in different ways. Like for example, a little multiple wrench that you can change it different sizes and different uh, shapes and you can use it for different things. Hey, you don't have to look through a toolbox and, and pull out all the tools you need. And yet, you just have that one handy dandy one that you can do fix many, many things with. Mm -hmm. You know what? Jesus does that. Yeah. We may not see the end of the tunnel and we may not know why, but he fixes things. Yeah, amen. If we allow him to do that. He is the only tool you need to get to the Father. Why? Because he paid the price for you and I. That's right. Just like the old rugged cross. <laughs> Jesus died on that cross for you and I. And he knew the task in front of him. Yes, he prayed to God that night, but he knew what he had to do. It's amazing because he did it for you and I. The love was greater. Because I know if I was in that position, guess what? I would say no. God, not me. No. 
But guess what? His son went on the cross for you and I. There's millions of people that know, do not know Jesus. And it is our job to tell them about it. Amen. To tell them and there's more to life than this one. That's right. There's more to life than this one. Jesus is the only tool. He'll go with you. You can take him anywhere. You don't have to pack a suitcase for him or, or nothing. People thought I was kidding when I told, told them that Jennifer has her own little suitcase. And I rolled it in a sanctuary. I said, oh my goodness, she does have a little suitcase. I said, yeah, she does. <laughs> Jesus loves you and I. And he is the only tool you need. Amen. Let's pray. Heaven.